Nawar Enz Miraba. Thank you very much for being with us, especially in Istanbul for women. It's so good to have you. And I would like to give you a little gift because I am doing this interview in a collective way with a colleague of mine, Ayşe Gül Doğan, on behalf of her and for myself, Ayşe için. And as witches of Turkish journalism, Ayşe Gül and I wanted to give you this so that, you know, no evil eye can harm you. Oh, thank you. Can I open? Yes, please do so. Oh. So, thank you very much. I would like to start my, the interview uh, by asking you about this book, actually. Because it's a book that you have written in 2013, like uh, nine years ago, in Spanish. Yes. But it's just in English. It just appeared this August this year in English. So late, I suppose. Could you a little bit tell us about this book and why it is so late, do you think? I, no, I, I wouldn't say. I mean, I published it in 2013 in Spanish and it's been published uh, like in four or five editions already. And it's a beautiful book of collection because uh, this is the only um, documents that I've got from, from Minerva Mirabal, my mother. So she's very famous around the world. Uh, but this is the, the, the only remain that we have of herself. Oh, like yeah. she's expressing herself in the way she is. It's very important for me because, um, you know, I had uh, this idea of my mother through the testimonies of other people, third people, like people that had the opportunity to, to, to meet her, to be friends or... But I never, because I was four years old when she was assassinated, and I, I had a Minerva Mirabal in my, in my mind that was not exactly the, the, the human being that she was, and she was a, an extraordinary human being. So I found out these letters um, years ago, uh, love letters that she exchanged with my father when, she, when they were courting and they met and they were in love before they married. And, uh, and then the letters that they exchanged when they were in jail, both in jail. So they exchanged letters uh, from one prison to the, to the other. And... Uh, I was very, very surprised by the personality that I found. How so? Uh, she was so strong, so demanding, and very, very much in love. And uh, those are beautiful letters. The book is those letters between them that I published, and, and also a letter that I, I wrote to them and the last letter that my father sent to me the day he was assassinated too. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's the book, you know, it's a, a journey through these voices that are still saying things. They, they still have things to, to tell the world. So this is why I think uh, it is important. It was translated by a professor from, from Philadelphia, oh, good. Heather Hands, and she did a very, very uh, touching uh, work by translating the book, and it was published by uh, University of Florida Press. And you can find it in, the, in, in Amazon. You can buy it, so it's available for everybody. We will have it in Turkish as well. Did, did, did they ask you to, you know, to, for the rights? There is a book in Turkish. Not this one. I, I don't know. Maybe someday. So, yeah. But the book uh, in the times of the butterflies, mm. 
written by Julia Alvarez. It's a novel, uh, but it's not fi fiction. It's a novel, and it's been published in in Turkish. Do you mind just a few lines to make our uh, audience can can you read a little bit of them just oh. a little for our audience so that you can make your mother known by our audience? Do you want to choose a little line from there? My father wanted to marry her, but, uh, but she wanted to finish the, the law school. And, and she was, you know, dealing with him not to postpone the marriage. So this is a letter when she finally said, OK, let's do it and let's marry. And, and that's not very useful. Uh, and in those times, it wasn't. Not a, and she, you know, she, she didn't want to marry, not, and she was very much in love. And, she, and, and this is her answer to a letter, or to a visit he paid to her. And, and she said, that is why I want to reason with you, not because I am any less idealistic than you, but rather because they made me manage a home, a household, and business for years. That's, that is why I am terrified of them. And that is why when I am with you, I think only about that beautiful moment and the infinite heaven of our love. But when I am alone, I think about the broom, the ironing board, the basket of dirty laundry, and all those mundane things that one must keep in mind, in mind at the wedding. Because they didn't have money. <laughs> so uh, she said, she's talking about the house they are going to live in. And she said, it doesn't matter if it is not the yellow house across from the courthouse. So what if it's a modest little house? I'll make it beautiful for you with my own two hands. It will be our home. And together we will watch the gardenias and jasmine grow, the ones that I have planted to adorn it. And I will place their flowers on your desk every day. My love, you will see that we won't need riches to make us happy. I prefer a spiritual tranquility and love a thousand times over. We are talking about your family. Is it possible to go back to 25 November 1960? I mean, you were four years old when you learned that you lost your father, your mother. I was four years old and I, I did not uh, was aware of what it meant. I knew that a big tragedy had happened, uh, but I couldn't understand and, and I what I remember uh, about that day is the screaming of my grandma and my aunt, the, 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 the one sister that survived because there were four sisters. And the, they was the one that survived and took after all the children of her sisters. And she was my mother too. Yeah. And, and she passed away in 2014 at the age of 89. I remember that, you know, las mató, las mató. He killed my sister. He killed my sisters. And, and she was saying, assassin, assassin. I just want to ask whether you, you always mentioned that you borrow uh, their, uh, the butterflies and wings. You, they are the... You know, a butterflies, you know? In the political movement that my parents formed, and they were members 
of 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 the of this political movement. Uh, the name, the code name that my mother uh, chose to use was butterfly. So that's why in, in my country, everybody knows the sisters as the butterflies. This is why Julia Alvarez wrote in the time of the butterflies, or there are poems and other books, and uh, everybody knows them as uh, the butterflies. And I think it's very meaningful because, you know, what are butterflies? Butterflies are, apart from being a symbol of, of beauty and of freedom, they are a symbol of transformation. I think she was wise when she, when she decided to, to, to use that code name for herself. Uh, it's not any, you know, animal from, from the animal kingdom, it's a butterfly. Can I ask you something? Do you sometimes feel or throughout your, you know, childhood and later when you grow up, do you sometimes feel that the the wings of that butterfly takes you? Do you feel like that? Uh, yeah, because you know, of course, every day, like you know, they were in the place that I grew up, and uh, because the house where, where they were living with us and where we grew up is a big garden and it was full of butterflies and there was always my grandma and my aunt uh, that I call mom to uh, saying, you know, the butterflies are here. They are here. So whenever I saw a butterfly, I felt uh, some ease in my heart, if I could say like that, you know, like I, I, I couldn't stop looking at them. And then it was an inspiration also, because all of the meaning of that. Uh, so it's uh, something that you cannot grasp, that you, you know, because if you grasp it, you destroy it. And it's also, so it's a symbol of something that lasts forever, even though it is of a very short duration of time. So can you tell us your transformation from this ugly little thing to a butterfly? Because you are a butterfly now yourself. Can you tell us your, your transformation? Uh. Well, I, um, I don't know. I grew up uh, listening to the stories and to the history, and everybody was telling me how, how they perceived my mother and my aunt, what uh, the, the gratefulness they felt for them, for what they did, because they gave their lives, and they knew it. They knew they could be killed, and they were going to be killed. In fact, one of the most famous words that came uh, from my mother, when she was put out of jail, everybody told her, Minerva, he's going to kill you. He's killed thousands of Dominicans during these 30 years. So he's going to kill you. And she answered, uh, if he kills me, I will raise my arms from the grave and I will be stronger. So she knew what was going to, to happen, what could happen. And, and she decided to keep on doing what she believed in. Actually, it wasn't only the courage of youth. She did it with her reason, is it? Uh, she was 33 and Maria Teresa was 25. Oh my God. And Patria was 35. They were really young woman, women, uh, they were mothers, they were wives, they were professionals. But how lucky that your mother had you. Because it's, now she's still with us, with all women all around the world. And it's so kind of you, and so important for you to be in Turkey this year. Turkey was a signatory 
to the Istanbul Convention, this European big agreement mm -hmm. to uh, protect women from violence. And it was first signed in Istanbul. That's why it had the name oh. Istanbul Convention. But our president all of a sudden said, ah, we don't want it. And now we are not a signature. Part of... Uh, yeah, so it's so important for women in Turkey that you come here, tell your story, give us the courage to reclaim that right to have that convention. That's a pity. <laughs> I think it's important because this uh, International Day was chosen worldwide in 1999 when the United Nations decided uh, to, to use the date 25th of November to use it in order to raise awareness, awareness uh, about this violence that our societies are you know, doing against our women. And, uh, and it has spread all around the world. And still, it's a, it's a tragedy that women are living in every country, no matter what type of country it is, because this tragedy happens in the richest countries of the world, and, it's, and, and also in poor countries. Even though the Mirabal sisters were political activists, their example serves to, to raise this awareness about the violence against women. Uh, in the private uh, space of their lives also. Because the personal is always also political. Yes, and, and this is about machism, patriarchal uh, behaviors. see the violence against women, wherever it is, at home, at outside, as a tool for silencing, silencing the dissent, as a tool to defend authoritarianism. Why? I, I, I see it as a heinous expression of power, of, ma of machism. You can find it this violence everywhere. I mean, at home, at work, in, in politics, everywhere. And it, it has ways, different ways of manifesting, of expressing this violence. And uh, it sometimes is very subtle and sometimes is very, very uh, aggressive like getting to be fatal. For the last two months, women in Iran are out have been protesting. Yes, and also maybe it is the, you know, Iran had this revolution in 1979, Iranian, Iranian Islamic revolution. But it looks like women in Iran now are fighting as a counter-revolutionary forces. It's interesting. But they shout Jin, Jian, Azadi. It means woman, life, freedom. Can you think as the world is now fighting with women against these inequalities, this uh, inequalities of the world, everything. How do you see it? I think that women are the most revolutionary expression uh, of the world right now. Really, we, we are the change that the world need, needs. It's not possible any change without women. And we are, uh, you know, being the leading character in this uh, revolution that the world needs. I, I, I think so. Uh, the thing is that 
these are very difficult times for the world, and these are very difficult times for human rights. We see them uh, in danger. We see them going back and forward, menaced by, even by women sometimes, denied this, this human rights of women, denied by some women. You just have to listen to, to this lady that was elected in Italy. It's a shame. And there are a lot of women, you know, saying that machism does not exist or that uh, they have the right to, to, to beat women or to control their lives. Uh, this is something that is living at the same time that you find young women uh, fighting in the streets claiming for the right to, to dignity, to freedom, uh, to, to equal, to equality. So I have hope. I know this is going to be left behind in, in a few years, I hope so. And I hope that uh, this example of women like the Mirabal sisters are going to help to, to live this shame that we are living now in the past. Do you think these fights of women all around the world now, that you mentioned for their rights, is it for only their rights, for women rights? Or if they can achieve these rights, human rights, will men also benefit from it? Of course. You know, I have always thought that what we have to do is to fight for equality, for non-discrimination. And that means not uh, that, I mean, we are fighting for a world where, where we do not repeat what women have suffered through history. I mean, we want a world with equality, men and women, and diverse preferences, sexual, gender, everybody, everybody's rights equal. This is what, this is the world where we want to live. A much more just and society. It's a world of justice. This is what we need, not a world where, you know, now it changes and then we are going to discriminate men for being men. No, that's the difference. So uh, whenever a woman stands and say, this is enough, she is also standing for the future, for a better future for humanity. Last question. What would you say to Turkish, the women of Turkey, not only Turkish one, Kurdish one, we have many different nationalities, uh, identities in Turkey as well, religions. So, what can you say to the women of Turkey to, who are fighting for equality here now in Turkey, in difficult, in these difficult times? any time we cannot get tired because you don't know one simple one simple jest one simple action can change the world you know that the butterfly effect thing you know that theory that you know the movement of a butterfly can pro produce a hurricane in the other part of the world. So this is it. This is what it is about. Uh, everybody is needed. Every thought, every arm, every feeling, every sensitivity against injustice, 
every uh, demand for non-discrimination matters. So we, we cannot get tired and we won't get tired. Thank you so much. I just want to say this. I, I, I think with you, you bring the wind in Turkey for our broken wings to repair and fly again. Thank you. Thanks to you. And can I hug you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sin socorro, sin defensa, cayeron las tres hermanas para levantarse luego. Levantadas para siempre, cayeron mártires patria.